Hey guys, here we are, back on Wind Chaser. Um, went ahead and got rid of our Peterbilts and picked up a pair of T600 uh, Tenworths. This one's already a little bit dirty. Uh, nice normal maps. And, um, this is actually the stock color. That, I mean, it has the uh, color uh, mesh thing, so you can pick whatever color you want. And this is just the default color. Um, and I really liked it, so I kept it. I was going to match my GMC truck, but these yellow, these uh, yellow, uh, the yellow on this Kenworth looks really, really sharp. So, um,. This was uh, brought over. A uh, friend gave me the uh, model from Truck Sim, and I just put it in game. And um, so it has all the UV maps still intact. For the interior, I re I baked the uh, cab, the hood, the uh, uh, bumper, the side skids, the frame. Um, I baked all those a new in the chrome a new AO texture. So the only thing that's original is the interior, just because it was um, really um, would be a hassle to redo the UV. So this is all original. So this has the uh, manual gear shift, and I'm, I. It, it used like keyboard functions, but I just went ahead and replaced it like um, the old 13 gear shift. So, um, and it runs by mouse. suspension cab on it as well so you can see the the hood kind of bouncing but it's actually the, the, the cab that's moving I have all my cameras set up in here too so so uh, just like my Kenworth my T813 this is just the T600 program to the other. Taking the scenic path to go refill our uh, Cat Challenger. So I have uh, I have the uh, cruise control set at three, and it's but uh, the cruise control still works like so you don't have to keep your finger on the keyboard all the time and you can just downshift
So this is specced at 475 horse. So it's nice to have the manual gear um, gearbox back. I mean, it's been off for a while, but I just decided to uh, finally have a nice truck to actually use it. So here's our old uh, kitty cat. this tank here. So, getting a little dirty. But it's so fun to drive this truck now with the manual gear gearbox. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful model. Absolutely gorgeous model. Well done. But uh, I just kind of uh, redid the the frame texture and put some rubber on the brake and um, not bad for a first version run through. Uh, there's still um, some fixes that need to be done. But So far, so good. First vehicle I put that manual transmission in and works pretty well. You just have to find your data for power power curves and
So this field is actually pretty low in nutrients, so it's high in moisture, low in nutrient, which is usually backwards. But I'm going to go ahead and set up a GPS line just to make this nice and a nice crisp um, edge here. So I know people are like, oh my god, that's not how you put down anhydrous, you need an anhydrous bar, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I'm well aware, you know? But I'm not building an irrelevant tool because this game doesn't have a third texture to allow. It's not a cultivator then. You know, you can't put down plow or cultivator texture if you're putting down anhydrous with an anhydrous bar. So I figured this was the best alternative this is by far better than a bar anyway, so... It's like, people get all bent out of shape out of the most irrelevant things. It's, it's hilarious, but, I mean... Yeah, I realize that's not how it's done in real life, but it's... Come on, it's... A farming simulator. If you don't like it, don't watch. say about that. It works pretty good for me. Got the massive piling facilities. Big halogen lights. See those things halfway across the map. It's great. I love in this game that lights don't lag at all. Well, at least not on my computer. People ask me what my specs are all the time, and I, it's listed in every single video in the d description, so if you were to take, you know, the two seconds it takes to read the description, which they obviously don't, um, like I could put a link to all my mods in there and they wouldn't even know. But it's right in the description, it tells you my graphics card, motherboard, my CPU, uh, GPU, so all it is is this uh, uh, a GTX 970 SC with the version 2 fan. Um, nothing outrageous and it works well. Um, even with my increased view distance of trees to a thousand and crops to 300, uh, yeah, 300. Does very well with maintaining frames per second. Even, even recording right now, it's still pretty, pretty high. But um, it's uh, I have eye action for my recording right now, and it has, and I'm recording in MP4, so it's encoding while it records using the Nvidia whatever so it drops your frame rate because it's condensing as you're filming real time so it's going to drop my frame rate it dropped my frame rate about 15 frames per second but even even at uh, 45 frames per second 50 
you know, it's still like you don't even notice it. So that way you can record at 1080p and you don't have to do any kind of conversions. It just you can upload a smaller file, you know, four to six gig files instead of 160 gig files if you were to record in AVI. So. Great shot of Conagra and the beat facilities. Train running by with the lights on. Very cool. So even with all that going on, I'm still at, you know, 40 to 50. So. It's all about clip distant management. First of all, it's not having shitty mods in your folder. You know, a handful of call stack errors will just drop your frames for a second to like nothing. So first it's use good mods. Next it's use a good map that uh, was designed well and built well. Again, all about clip distance and view distance management. Um, and that's included inside the mod itself, uh, not just the map. So if you uh, are concerned about errors, the log, the log is your friend. It will tell you all errors. Um, there might be like a texture error, like PNG or like two to the or n to the second power. Um, that really doesn't affect performance really at all. It's just your you crop your image or you save your image in a in a uh, uh, a ratio that isn't like um, compatible with um, like 64, 128, 512, 10, 40, you know 1024. So it's not a multiple of any of those numbers. So. Like if you want a long rectangle, just save it as like 25, 256 by 5, 512, you know? That's how you want to save those non-square um, textures. You want to save it in a multiple that's divisible by one of those numbers. So divisible by 2. 2 to the n. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Why? I, I'm not sure why, but that's just how it has to be. Our beautiful Kenworth just chilling there with his lights on, engine running probably. We're gonna want to run the truck now instead of the green car or the combine. Just got a little out of hand here with the plow. So now, I'm going to load this one. See how my auto steer works again. Down to about eight. 
grab the tool. So what you do when you're setting up your auto steer is um, this is what you're looking for and the arrow tells you you can like change your arrow which way you want to turn and then I have my offset set at one so it will turn at the like one meter um, to the end of the field and it works best if you do two headlands like two passes per working width um, then slow this down to eight again let it drop and bump it up to 12 so I, I think it works best if you do two headlands that way you, you're not missing anything and then you can bump it back a little bit like two meters from the end of your your field just because sometimes if it's kind of angled funny it will and you have obstacles like power lines and such it uh, doesn't always work the best because it cuts it really close and it uh, kind of takes an angle into the turn it doesn't come in square with your lane so it's just something i don't really Um, you don't want to offset, you don't want to adjust your working width. But this is uh, so I'll just slow them down to uh, eight, and my tool will get dropped. Bump it up to as fast as it will go. So we did a lot of our primary tillage and harvesting and uh, we pretty much hired out everything in the fall and uh, we have 77,000 left for all of our seed, fertilizer, and hydras. So uh, and it cost a lot of money to rent. You know we burnt uh, probably 150,000 at least last season between seed and hired workers and fertilizer and see what I mean he's coming in really close here just because it's I only did one headland Since I did a manual turn, I'll have to turn him back off. But um, we pretty much got all of our tillage and harvesting done in one day. Just because we were running three combines and we are running basically two tractors on tillage. And then we rented two more to uh, uh, just take care of these two new fields that we bought up late in the season so we had uh, one great we had one too busy enough even with three combines if we were running three combines on corn we'd need a second uh, uh, second grain cart for sure but uh, we managed pretty well just our one uh, Kinsey 1500 1500 bushel grain carts so. So I'll slow this guy down again, pick up the tool, let him do his turn, get past the apex, and hammer it down again. So 
So I think the next, um, once I'm finished with my exams here, it's going to give me some time to model, uh, remodel some things, finish some models. Uh, so after that, it's going to be the rogator that I'm pretty much going to focus on because I need that sprayer. And then after that, uh, hopefully I can finish up the DB120 model and send that over to Raphael so it has Maya textures on it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Blender, but it's I think Maya just does better uh, texture burns. And then hopefully I can, after I'm finished with that DB120, I can convert it into a 24 row. Uh, just because they make D, uh, 24 rows on a DB frame, so it'd be nice to have smaller planner. And then uh, it'd be cool to turn this into a articulating tractor since I wouldn't really have to change much on the cab or engine or hood just modify the frame a little bit and I definitely want to get that roll gator just because I've never ever ever seen a a really well-built rogator before, so... Crazy terrain for this, uh, cultivator here. Uploading a video as well. So. so, even with this 50 foot cultivator, it takes quite a while to uh, complete fields. Even with two of them, actually, it takes a while. So. Um, I haven't played in a while, so I kind of lose track of how many acres that we're farming now. I think it's around 700, maybe? I'm going to have to manually turn this one. game in the dark just so you can see the shadows and the lights lighting your lighting package and really see the dust the particle animations so.
so basically, um, I'm the only one running equipment right now. No hired workers, they all went home. No uh, multiplayer, so. It's nice being out here. <clears throat> nice and quiet besides the roaring engine <laughs> but no traffic besides the train that keeps buzzing by and no cars to the point now where I'm not sure GPS will be able to turn around. So there's really no need to actually cultivate, but um, we do it just because you see how rough these tractors drive on this plowed terrain. It makes it much easier to to uh, plants, especially if we're running two our two big tractors on these uh, field cultivators, we can run the 8R on the DB120. And it uh, struggles a little bit, but uh, it makes it a lot easier for the cultivate. Get a nice uh, planting ground, as you really should for. Uh, Planter like that, and I see them. my last fixed exam on Friday. It was a uh, summative where it was, um, well we had, first we had a written exam and then we had a summative portion so it was five hours of exams Friday just for one class. Um, but the summative was uh, pretty difficult. It was making a three unit bridge with a, uh, a full, uh, full gold crown prep Prepara uh, preparation and then um, the second abutment was a uh, porcelain fused the metal spec so and uh, it's actually it's actually pretty hard because uh, 
um, our school's all digital now, so it uses these uh, CERIC machines, which are basically um, uh, CAD CAM. Basically, it's computer-aided design, computer-aided machine. So you basically it takes a 3D image of your preparation down to the thousandths of a millimeter precision, and so that's what they use to grade us. So it's pretty hard to do well because they're so it's such a precise grading system. But then. Um, you can like design your your um, provisional or your uh, final uh, press, prosthesis, and your milling unit will make it. You can make veneers, crowns, bridges. Basically, you name it, it can make it. So. my entire Friday. And then Monday I have an endo exam. And then Tuesday I have another exam. So it's like just the worst three weeks ever. Because we usually take about 15 classes a semester, and they all start at different times, and they all finish at different times, so um, usually we're taking like six, probably like seven or eight classes at a time, because some, some like, they go on like furlough, they you know, we had to like progress in other courses till we can like continue with another course kind of thing. So it's not like we're taking all 15 at the same time, but sometimes we're juggling, you know, eight, nine, nine classes at the same time. So it can get chaotic. But um, they all, all the finals kind of like they all end within the three weeks, the last three weeks. So. It's just three weeks of finals, it sucks. It's pretty much like five five exams for every, every week for three to four weeks. But that's dental school. So that's kind of why I've been MIA uh, coming down to our last last uh, real exam on Monday and then Tuesday really isn't that big of a deal. It's a written exam and a summative, but it's really basic dentistry, basic. Don't even have to study. It's just common sense this now after two years, so. And then the next week, Tuesday, is a radiology exam, which is a big one, so that's all like oral pathologies and detecting uh, on the radiographs. So. so I'll just turn that off now and just turn it on manual. So like after a stressful day, I gotta come on here and play a little bit or do a little modeling or uh, help people out with all their projects they're doing. Just a way to escape a little bit, de-stress. Some of my other classmates, they play uh, one of them was playing like League of Legends or something, I don't know. Like, they all play a different weird games. So most of them play like Madden or like NBA or 2K or like, you know, sports games on their PlayStation or Xbox. I don't know, I never really got into sports games. I was never into sports. I was always into um, the, like Call of Duty. 
the Call of Duty games and and uh, the Gran Turismo's, uh, Grand Theft Autos. I don't know. I was just never a big sports game kind of person. I remember when my parents got me the Xbox. The first year the Xbox 360 came out, and it was like Call of Duty. I played that game like day and night. It's the greatest thing ever. And now I don't even know how to aim or shoot. So. What makes Farm Sim so fun is it's sandbox. It's totally... Um, you can pretty much personalize every aspect of it just because they give you uh, uh, a giant's editor, they give you a map editor, they give you uh, plugins for modeling software so you can model and you can script and animate. So it's The game itself is designed to be modded where other games that, you know, people play like the truck sim, it really doesn't have that freedom to like mod and script. And you can pretty much change the layout, the environment. It has a really good economy aspect to it compared to like I mean, I realize it's not that great, but compared to other games, it uh, actually has an economy that's fluid and dynamic and changes. And it's not static, but I mean, it can improve because, I mean, if you're going to... These grains are commodity prices, so it really should be... Um, if it's, you know, it would be cool if you can contract your grain so you don't have to hurry up and sell it all in an hour. It would be great if you can just take your time to unload your grain and sell it as you need it and get it all in you know by a deadline that would be cool but i'm really not sure that's the focus of giants right now they're just kind of focused on getting it on as many different media forms as possible you know with their console version and their like phone versions and stuff like that but I really don't think they're that concerned with adding more realism to the game. Uh, but it's nice to see that they're coming out with uh, DLCs and just more uh, mods. Hopefully they continue with that. And hopefully those capable of scripting. You know, my background is not, not in coding or writing or computer science. I wish it was. Um, I took like an intro course and that's about it. But you see all these Germans uh, writing these beautiful scripts, these beautiful mods. It's really impressive. That's one thing I wish um, I had more time to learn, but um, I really want to learn to like really learn more of Blender. And I also want to like learn Maya as well. Just. Um, because you can easily convert and interchange models from one to the other. So, but something that would be a simple script, I think, that would be easy to write um, would be like a real time yield display. Like, you have these number shaders here, but it would be cool if. You had like your liters coming in per like square meter. Like you'd have your tank that's filling up, and then you have your speed. So you can do like a real time yield liters per second um, per distance traveled. Because you'd have your working area like meters square meter working area plus you'd have your rate of travel so you know your air total area that you're covering per second and then you'd have your liters coming in per second so you know your liters per area and then you can just convert that to liters per hectare or bushels 
uh, bushels per acre so you can get a real-time um, yield calculation in the cab. So, and that'd be really useful for a soil mod. You could uh, bring up your soil mod display and be like, okay, this is my nutrients, my moisture, uh, this is the kind of yield I'm getting in these conditions, and then you can uh, go to another field that maybe might have a little bit higher nutrient and see what those conditions are like. And, I don't know. I feel like it wouldn't be that difficult to script, write a, write a script for that. Because a uh, drill had that yield loss, and it was based on square meter working area and speed, and you would have a certain percentage loss if you went over, or if you're bringing in too much material that the cleaning area could handle. We have strips that tell you your RPMs, tell you your speed. The game itself tells you how many hectares you're working already. So no, I think it would be something to look into. I mean, it's not a game-changing mod, but I think it would uh, be a fun feature. For those of us that like to keep track of their data, see improvement year after year. So this feels a little bit short in PK. I think we initially sprayed nitrogen in this field. I'd like to see them come out with an, an American uh, DLC, uh, like they did in 13 with that titanium uh, package, just because uh, even the Europeans are like the Brazilians and people, you know, in the South Americas and what have you, they all want the American versions too and they can easily modify it. It'd be nice if they were to get like some um, rights for like Eco so they can make uh, Sunflower Challenger because I know every if you go on YouTube and you look at Challenger it's pretty much all European MT765s you know they love that tractor over there and I mean I understand it's you know good flotation it's probably a, a good value of a tractor at, uh, but uh, For whatever reason, Giants doesn't really uh, have the authority to make and sell anything like that, or 
they're versatile, versatile would be great. I started to work on a versatile 310 row crop, but um, kind of ran out of gas. Gas being uh, motivation with that. Uh, I'll probably finish it at some point, but I think a 375 uh, with row crop would be a cool tractor to have for a planting tractor. Um, there's a guy's channel on YouTube, Mike Less. Um, I'm not sure what his actual job description is for Versatile. Maybe like branch manager or marketing manager or something like that, but he, um, he always has some good videos. He updates videos pretty frequently on uh, Versatile uh, in Wisconsin and Illinois and Iowa. He has uh, some 450s and 550s, uh, 375s, 310s, 290s. Pretty much everything, uh, some sprayer footage, a couple combine videos. It's just nice to see the machines work, and he's, he has a, uses a really good camera, so the videos are great. Big Tractor Power, again, that's another great YouTube channel that uh, they pretty much update their videos weekly and new, new videos all the big equipment. So I'm not really sure what I want to plan here. Probably uh, Soybean. Not quite sure. I do soybean here, corn eighteen. I think we're gonna go heavy in soybean again because we only planted uh, thirteen in field two. On the PDA, we planted field 2 and 13, and we ended up with about 1.4 million liters of corn, so. And we did, we did uh, 44, 1, 3, 18 in soybeans, and we ended up with 40,000 less than we did the previous season, so. We have about 600,000 in soybeans, so it won't take very long to sell that. I'd like to get it to the million, million liters of soybeans, so that would take about two new fields, which would be about two new big fields, so. Um, we're obviously going to have to rent the air seeder again and plant some more canola and probably get into the wheat and barley. Just to uh, get some more crops in a rotation. Now, I haven't, I've never harvested, uh, what is it, sub corn, sold corn, or whatever. I don't even know what that is, but um, definitely not a Wisconsin crop. Another thing would be to. Uh, get into sugar beets, but uh, I really don't have any sugar beet equipment except a an Oxbow uh, dump cart. So I guess that's just an excuse to make some modern uh, American lifting and defoliating equipment.
we're starting to farm, you know, three cores, you know, 700 and so acres. So I think if next season we pick up like uh, 26, 27, 28, 25 of those fields, uh, we'll be flirting with a thousand acres. Actual thousand acres. So. At that point, we'll be spending probably three hundred thousand or more on renting equipment and hired workers and seed and fertilizer just to get the crops in the ground and back out. Too bad there's there isn't land tax. That'd be great to have like a certain percentage of land tax per per like every so like, so many days. It took out just a little bit every day. You know, like 5% of your land's value every two weeks or something. I don't know. I mean, this map has a lot of viable objects, a lot of buildings that you can buy, and a lot of fields you can buy. Um, so there's uh, a lot that you can do with your money. You can buy a lot of silos and uh, buildings. A lot of land, as you can see, there's an enormous amount of land left by probably like over 10 million, at least probably 15 million in land left to buy. sheds to buy, cattle cattle sheds to buy, fermenting silos to buy. It's you know, realistically, we're just the uh, small little operation here on the south end of the, the map. We don't even have like the complete bottom, bottom fourth. I think if we picked up 36 and 35, 11 and 15 kind of equate 14. So you know, we got a lot of land left to go. With three combines rented, we can harvest all of our fields in a day. So it doesn't really. We put, uh, I think it was 10 hours on our rented combines, and we had three of them. So it takes a little over, it was like 10 point, almost 11 hours. So it takes about 30, 33 hours with one combine to harvest all of our fields. So you knock it down, it's about 10 or 11. So half a day, so we can easily double our land. But we didn't harvest any of these fields down here. We didn't harvest this this field 29. We didn't harvest 34, uh, 15, or 11. So that added about 300 acres. Two to three hundred acres. So 
this is a pretty decent sized field to uh, do solo. Basically all we have left to do on this farm as of now is uh, wait for a great demand to sell our crops and to finish up our fall tillage. Um, I'll probably start hiring off these two tractors and do some manual planting with the 8R. Once it's, uh, hopefully I can finish this by midnight. Fast forward time to about like 6 in the morning and get going again.
the buttons and control panels. Plus like a little floor carpet or something. The only thing I don't like about indoor lights is it affects the front light. That bugs me. Without GPS, I would be lost. I would hate to see what this field would look like in the morning when there's when it's light out. The lighting package on this Challenger is not the best. I'm sure you could buy a, an upgraded lighting package for this tractor, but just based on the kind of, uh, I don't know, you have to have some powerful, powerful lights to Compared to other tractors, it's, I feel like this has so few lights. Like, there's nothing on the front cab, you know, up here. There's just like two little, and then I feel like it wouldn't do a very good job of lighting up your, your uh, field, so... There goes the train, racing by.
finish before midnight. Close. 